you can turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. I want to talk today to the liars that help this ministry. Yes, how liars help King James Video Ministries. Um, it has come to my attention so many times I get people sending me links to things and whatever else and, I, and how many lies are told about me. And I just got to tell you, you know, there's times that you're supposed to thank your subscribers, thank, you know, whatever people. But I haven't really taken the opportunity yet to thank the liars, the people that lie about me and uh, just whatever. I got to thank you, okay, because things are going so good. I have to attribute some of my success uh, in ministry, whatever, and I don't mean monetary, I'm just saying Lord using me, I have to attribute some of it to you out there, to my liars out there, the, the, not my liars, because you're, you're your own little thing there, I realize, but you know, I, I just got to thank some of you people for lying about me. Yeah, let me show you why. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 through 12 says here, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Hi. <laughs> and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. There are a lot of false things that are said, that are said about me, just blatant lies. It's amazing. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Thank you. This is my way of saying thank you. You know, I, one of the things, I'm going to go over some of the lies here, the most common lies, and one of them is that uh, there's just no joy in you anymore. They're just, you're just so bitter. You're just, <laughs> you're just going, okay, I guess my smiles are what, you know? And, and I mean, I'm enjoying life. We have a great time, you know? Uh, we have a lot of fun. You know, I laugh all throughout my sermons. I tell jokes and, you know, see, you know, people don't even watch the videos and they just, you know, they see me rebuking something. They go, you're so bitter. <laughs> this is not actually a smile. I'm not laughing. This is bitterness and sorrow and, Okay. Uh, that's one of the false lies that's brought against me. Another one of the ones that I love, and, and, and just you know, let me just let me let me make official statements here, okay, against the liars out there. Um, Brian Denlinger is bitter and never has any fun. Uh, not true. I do have quite a bit of fun. Okay, so now you can stop lying about me. Well, maybe you shouldn't because then I then say I won't get as many rewards in heaven. Okay, sorry. Just keep lying. Okay. Keep the lies coming. I need more, you know, against the ministry. That helps me to get more blessings. Um, again, another one of the lies is uh, that Brian Denlinger is a modalist. He teaches modalism. Uh, this is amazing um, because uh, you just do a little Google search there and modalist comes up and it says God in three modes. Um, show me where I've ever preached that. I've never have. So I will officially state for the record, I am not a modalist. I believe modalism is a heresy okay it's pretty easy to debunk but it's at least it's closer to the truth than the trinitarian nonsense all right it's a little bit closer god doesn't appear as three different modes okay he's body body soul spirit these three are one being you know you get it so you call me a modalist well you're a liar i'm not a modalist official statement okay number two brian denlinger teaches works salvation another one of my favorite ones uh, I've never taught works salvation, nor will I ever teach works salvation for a Christian today. Now, I have taught it for, it's partially there in the time of Jacob's trouble, because you have, you know, uh, they have the faith in Jesus and keep the commandments, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, you can't take the mark of the beast, so there's an element of works there. Uh, he that shall endure the end, the same shall be saved, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. There's an element of works there. It's not totally works, but then you get to the Matthew chapter 25, when Jesus is judging him and he says, you haven't visited me in prison, you haven't this, you haven't that. Okay, that's like pretty much totally works. And then you get into the millennial kingdom, of course. Jesus Christ is physically a present, so you can't have faith at that point in time. So it's totally works then. And you get that in Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. So it is somewhat true that I do teach works salvation, but not for today. Um, and of course, people will twist that and whatever else, which is fine because you're speaking falsely against me, and I get more rewards for that, and the Lord blesses me more, so thank you, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but the thing of work salvation, they say that I'd say that a changed life has to follow salvation. Well, that's just kind of a duh moment, you know? But see, work salvation is you never know for sure. It's you are being saved. You can't say, I'm saved. I know for sure I'm saved. Uh, that's not what I've ever preached. Salvation happens, boom, 
right there. Okay. Then you do works meet for repentance. The salvation, the, the second salvation is you save your life from the mess that it was when you came to the Lord to be saved. All right. That's why Paul writes to Timothy and he says, in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. He's not telling him to, to work for your salvation. Another place he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay. Sin will wreck your life. So you get saved. You come to the Lord as a sinner, broken sinner. You say, God, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You know, hello. And you come to the Lord as a sinner. You get saved. All right. Now you say, all right, now, Lord, please help me with this addiction and that thing there and that thing there and whatever else and show me what else I need to clean up in my life. Okay? But that doesn't affect your eternity in terms of, you know, whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. Uh, believe you me, I'm in contact with plenty of Christians that are just really messed up in sin and they're saved and they're going to heaven when they die. Why? Because salvation happened in the past for them. They put their faith in Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection there. And then they do works meet for repentance. And if they don't, they mess their life up. But they're still going to heaven. So let me make the official statement. I do not teach works salvation for today. I teach it for the next dispensation as a partial faith in works. Because Revelation 14, 12 proves it. And into the millennial kingdom. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there's definitely the judgment of the nations. You see it there. There's no faith mentioned in Matthew chapter 25. Preached on that before. And then going into the millennial kingdom, you can't have faith in somebody that's physically ruling on the earth. Okay, so in that sense, yes, I do teach work salvation for the future. Okay, you get that for the future there. So, but, you know, don't lie. But if you want to, well, keep the blessings coming. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, another one of the ones that I'll hear, which I find to be funny, is Brian Denlinger has no church. Now, that's amazing because I've never met one person, you know, face to face that's ever, you know, come, people that make that statement, they don't come here, they don't know me personally, they don't know who I meet with, and yet they have this magical ESP type of a thing that they can see me wherever I go. And when I actually do meet with people and I've met different people up here and things, and I've, you know, witnessed quite a bit out in public and whatever, and when they see that, they're just, I guess... The, the reception's not there. It's kind of get, kind of fuzzy or something like that. I think the reception is a little bit off in some of those people's brains. They all know that I never worship with anybody else or fellowship with anybody else or witness to anybody. It's just me alone back in the woods someplace and whatever else because they've seen videos on YouTube that prove it. Even though nobody's ever actually come here and physically talked to me other than uh, Joshua Alvarez did the one time. Uh actually came and, you know, visited with me a little bit. Uh, but there's, you know, all these people on YouTube, they just know for sure that I don't ever fellowship with people. I hide out in the wilderness someplace, even though right now I'm recording this video in town. Okay, um, yeah. Um, but you know, Brian Denlinger has no church. Um, in other words, I don't have a building where people come and emulate me. You know, that's what they're really saying. Um, I have a church. I'm part of the church. I'm part of it all the time. I'm in church all the time. I'm never out of the church. But, you know, you, you want to keep lying about me and keep saying that I'm isolated and I never talk to anybody about Jesus and whatever else because you're someplace across the world or, you know, wherever else, some other state, and you know everything about me. Keep the lies coming. More blessings. Appreciate it. I really do. Um, number four. Um, Brian, and I'll make the official statement there. Uh, yes, I do have a church. Yes, I do fellowship with people. Okay? All right? So you keep it up. Well, then you're lying. Uh, another one here. Um, Brian Denlinger never admits to being wrong. I've seen that one. And again, I'm just trying to make some official statements here because people accuse me of lying and things. So I'll make an official statement. Uh, yes, I have been wrong in a bunch of different situations. But see, the thing is, people get their little their little pet doctrine or the little thing there, and they want me to admit that I'm wrong in that. But if I line up with the scriptures, I'm not going to prove, you're, you're not going to say, you know, are you wrong or whatever. I'm going to say, no, I'm not wrong. And I'm not wrong on a lot of the stands that I take. And where I have been wrong, yes, I have come out with videos and I've said, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. I was teaching error. And yet my enemies, I've never seen any of their videos doing that. They're never in error, but I am in error all the time. 
Okay. So Brian Ellinger never admits to being wrong. Not true. I have been wrong numerous times, um, a bunch of different times, and it's in my videos. It's it's there. You want to make a little court case against me or whatever else? You can find the evidence that yes, I have admitted to being wrong. Um, admitted to being wrong. One of the most recent ones was this thing of teaching this Antichrist peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. I taught that thing for years. I was wrong. Uh, for many years, I used the Trinitarian type of uh, terminology and everything else, um, but yet believed in the biblical Godhead. A lot of preachers did that. Okay, um, I was wrong. Did you hear that? I said I was wrong. So you want to keep coming out and saying that I never admit to being wrong? Well, then you're a liar. Just as simple as that. And I get more rewards. Again, uh, another one, one of my favorites is Brian Denlinger is a racist. I love that. Uh, Brian Denlinger is a racist. Okay, um, then why do I have people from pretty much every kindred out there, race, whatever you want to say, um, why do I have people from pretty much every group, every ethnicity that watch me if I'm a racist? And uh, where is the statement that I've ever made that the German race is superior and all others should be eliminated. See, that is racism, if I would make a statement like that. You look up, again, look up the definition of racism. It's one race is superior above all the rest and the rest should be eliminated. That's racist. Okay, I've never made a statement like that. Show me one time where I've ever said that. Right? But if you persist in teaching the lies and whatever else and just continuing to speak these lies and, and whatever about me, um, then uh, you're lying and whatever. <laughs> Okay. I don't hate anybody's race. I don't hate anybody because of their skin color or their ethnicity or whatever else. Not at all. There's going to be some very, very dear um, black brethren up in heaven and some Orientals and some Asiatics and you know, just whatever. It just go down through the list. Can't wait. Get up there and be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not a racist. Let's continue here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4 through 10. Again, I, I gotta I gotta just take a minute or two here. If you're a faithful supporter of this ministry, well, you're not really included in this one. I'm sorry. This is one of the, you know, this is this is a thank you to all my unfaithful uh non-supporter, you know, whatever you want to say. The people that lie about me. I gotta thank them here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. I've had a lot of those in the ministry. So again, you people out there that are lying about me, you're helping to approve me as a minister of God. Not only do I get blessings in heaven, I'm actually being approved by your persecution of this ministry and you lying about me. Now, I haven't gotten this one yet. Verse 5, in stripes and imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, well, I've done labors, in watchings and fastings, so I've been beaten yet or put in prison yet, although I'm sure that there's people that would like that to happen. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, I got that one. <laughs> by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report, and good report as deceivers, you call me a deceiver, and yet true. Hmm. You don't have to spend so much time on some guy if he's just a heretic. The Bible says a man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. I've had to reject a lot of people that turned out to be heretical. And you know what I do? I delete their channel and go, goodbye, and I walk away. And I get back to preaching the word. I don't make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of exposed videos on uh, whoever. And of course, you know, some wing nuts going to say, well, what about Steven Anderson? Steven Anderson is part of a political movement, right? He gets mainstream media coverage. There's people that are coming out of his system and going out and spreading this, this hateful, bathlic thing and whatever, this doctrine of reprobation and whatever else. He is a dangerous political movement, right? And again, I don't spend all my time watching everything the guy does. I'm not some obsessive little nothing that has no life. <clears throat> but uh, as deceivers and yet true, sorry, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 
Um, it's always a, a really neat thing to go down through that list there and just see when you're going through hard times and whatever else, it's neat to see, hey, yeah, Paul went through it. And a lot of that stuff is the approval process of you being a minister of Jesus Christ. So, again, thank you to my enemies. Um, keep up all your evil report videos. Brian down there exposed, lying about me, calling me all things that are not true. Uh, yeah, great. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. I've never really been afraid of these people. They just annoy me so badly, you know. <laughs> I just get so irritated and things and, you know, whatever. But... I'm learning to really enjoy it now. I really am. Uh, you know, the Lord is, is doing amazing things through this ministry. We're getting, seeing people getting saved just right and left and people's lives being changed and whatever. And I'm really excited for the, the direction that this ministry is headed and uh, getting back into DVD production and uh, having DVDs just out there that people can just make copies and just hand them out like like gospel tracks. You're just handing people DVDs in the future. I'm looking forward to that and tracks and whatever else we can get into. Good times coming. Unless you're an enemy of this ministry, then you're going to get migraine headaches and whatever. Uh, verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Uh, I haven't always succeeded at that. All right? And I'll admit to that. I admit to a fault, you know, you know what I'm saying? I will admit to that. Sometimes I've been rather fleshly. Sometimes I've said things that were, you know, I wasn't very clear, didn't bring it out correctly or whatever. But that right there, I have always tried to be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh um, you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Get my wording exactly right there. People have asked me questions down through the years, and I have tried to be there to answer people from the scriptures. You look at all the videos I've put out over the last 10 years, and it's all, uh, what about this, what about that? And, and that stuff comes from the body of Christ. Um, the Lord will you know, put sermon ideas in my mind and whatever else, but I would say probably, probably 70%, 70 to 80% of the sermons that have come out have been the body of Christ, their thoughts, their, their uh, interaction with this whole thing. Um, this is not all about me. This ministry is the body of Christ and the Lord using me to bring out truth on these issues. Um, so you want to lie about that? Well, that's your problem. Verse 16, having a good conscience, and I do, by the way, because I know that I've tried to do things. There have been times I've messed up bad. Uh, I know the one time there was this thing, and I think I've corrected this before, but I just want to say it again because I feel stupid about what I said. I came out with a thing where um, I showed that the uh, woman in the Loving versus Virginia case, she came out and she said, overthrowing the anti-miscegenation laws in the 1960s, I think it was 1962, I think, Loving versus Virginia, with two Jesuit trained lawyers, but yeah. Um, she said, overthrowing that helped pave the way for the gay marriage laws to be passed. And if we hadn't done the anti-miscegenation laws, gotten rid of that, we wouldn't have gay marriage today. And I said, see, so the anti-miscegenation laws gave way to the gay marriage thing. Later on, somebody asked me a question, question and answer type of video, and they said um, something about that I said that, that the overthrowing the interracial marriage laws, the anti-miscegenation stuff, brought in gay marriage. And I said, no, I didn't say that. You know, I totally forgot it. I wasn't trying to deceive anybody, okay? I, mean, <laughs> I got a lot of videos out there. I forgot the whole thing. So I, I had, you know, hey, I made a mistake. I'm sorry about that. You know, another big thing is I believe I teach eternal security, absolutely teach eternal security. And years and years ago in this very room, standing in this very spot, I did a sermon. I didn't have that backdrop there, but it was just the wall. I did a sermon on questions on eternal security. And I said, Romans chapter 11, I don't know, it could possibly be somebody losing their salvation. And, you know, I don't believe that way anymore. 
I've left the sermon up simply because I did defend eternal security the whole way through it. One passage, and I said, I don't know on that. I was honest. I wasn't trying to teach some kind of a loophole thing or something like that. People took it totally out of context. And Revelation chapter 22 and Revelation chapter 3, verse, I can't think what it is. Uh, I'd have to look that up. But the whole point is, there's a thing about you know having your part taken out of the book of life. Now, I do believe that that is somebody losing their salvation. But you can make it dispensationally for the millennial kingdom. You can make it dispensationally for the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, and I understand that. I understand the arguments. You know, how can you be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and yet have lose your salvation? You know, that doesn't work. Yeah, I understand that. Again, I was I was just trying to be honest there. I wasn't trying to be some kind of heretic or whatever else. And I've tried to correct that thing. And yet people still leave the videos up. There, there's just this agenda there. Even after I've come out and said, I'm sorry, I apologize. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They keep it up because they're trying to destroy my character. They're trying to, it's evil report is the whole thing. That's what they're trying to do. But I have a good conscience because I know I've tried my best. I know I've failed and I know I've come out and I've apologized for that. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Well, I suffer for well-doing a lot of times. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being a little bit funny and sarcastic here. But again, I, why am I making this video? Am I making this video because I want to pout and whine and cry and whatever else? And uh, No, I'm making it because I'm going through this stuff. And a lot of you are too. And if you haven't yet, you will be. You'll have people make evil report about you and it'll just hurt you so bad sometimes and you think, I wasn't I didn't say I didn't mean that. If I said that, that's that's not what I meant. You're taking me out taking my words out of context. What are you what are you doing? Um, you're being approved as a minister of Jesus Christ when you go through that thing. And it's rough. It is rough sometimes, you know? I mean, you see Jesus Christ, even, even you know, God himself, man, God manifest in the flesh, and he's walking around and, and he's just marveling at their unbelief. And he's going, wow, you know, this is really bad. Can you relate? Yes. But uh, it leads to blessings. So I'll end this video by just simply saying, if you... Persist in lying about me after I've come out and made some public statements here and said I'm not a modalist. I'm not a racist. Um, I don't teach work salvation for a Christian today. Get, get that. I do have a church. All right. Um, I have admitted to being wrong and whatever other things that you want to put on me and personal attacks and whatever else. Uh, if you want to continue in that, then you're a liar. Uh, just as simple as that. And um, uh, li liars are going to have their part in the lake of fire. So I do hope you get saved. Come to the end of your selfish, selfish uh, life that you have. So, but you know, keep making your videos. Keep making them. Keep cutting up what I say. Keep, you know, your evil report stuff up. After I've come out and said, hey, I'm sorry about that, whatever. Keep it up. Yeah, go ahead. Just gets me more blessings. Just uh, has the Lord use me more. So uh, that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.